Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. When we look at the Word of God, we find some passages much more applicable to our life than others. In other words, some give us principles, instructions for conduct and behavior in order to bring about a change in our circumstances. Others simply give us knowledge. It is a passage of revelation. Well, what we're going to be studying today from the book of Psalms is one that is highly applicable to our lives. First of all, it deals with fear. And it doesn't matter who you may be or I am, we all have something in common. We all at times have been fearful. There's been things that have caused us to be afraid. Now, we know the scripture commands us, fear not, do not be afraid. But there's also a basis for that, biblical truth that assists us to overcome that fear, to see things from God's standpoint. Secondly, we also have that wonderful word of of instruction where it says, perfect love cast out all fear. So when we are recipients of that perfect love, the love of God, or maybe when we're displaying and giving that perfect love that we've received to someone else, it is going to cause us not to be fearful, but to have a spirit of overcoming those things, whether they are perceived or whether they're real. And whether we are victims of other people's actions against us or we are fearful of the consequences, and hear this, from our own actions. And this may have great, great significance in the passage that we're going to be looking at. So with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Psalms and Psalm 6. The book of Psalms and Psalm 6. Now, we find that verse 1 in Hebrew is known as an inscription. I mention this because many Psalms have this heading over, in English, over the first verse. But I've shared with you, in Hebrew, it is the first verse. So look with me to that first verse in the Hebrew text, the inscription, where it says, Lamatzeach, which is to the chief musician or maybe to the choir director we know that these psalms were were not just recited but they were sung but something else that needs to be pointed out is that this word lematzeach which can mean to the chief uh, music director we need to see that there's a a word that's chosen here lematzeach which has within it the word victory the word for overcoming secondly we find that the instruction also concerns instruments because we have the phrase ben ginot ben ginot means on and what are these phrase niginot well this word i don't want to say it right niginot it has to do with instruments that can be played the word men again which is a verb and singular means to play specifically an instrument a musical instrument so this may be a generic term for instruments not speaking about one in particular the reason why this may be the case is because if you keep reading we have the phrase al hashminit the word hashminit This is from the Hebrew word, which relates to the number eight, or more specifically, eighth. This may be referring to an instrument that has eight strings. 
And the number eight has significance. It's a number of redemption, a number of kingdom. And what we need to remember is this. We are God's redeemed people. If you haven't experienced his redemption, you need to do so immediately. There are great and eternal benefits from being the redeemed of the Lord. Redeemed by the blood of Messiah that you receive by faith in him. Now, our purpose is not to share the gospel at this time, but simply to emphasize through redemption, we are going to experience a kingdom victory. The next thing we have is that familiar phrase, Ms. Moore, Le David, which means a psalm of David. Now, let's get right into the psalm, Psalm 6, and it's going to be verse 1 in English, or verse 2 in Hebrew, in, in Hebrew, where it says, O Lord, not in your anger. And the next word means to reprove. It's a word of rebuking. Now, it's related to discipline, but it's a reproof, a rebuking, a discipline. And David is saying here, and this tells us a lot, that David may be, the cause of his circumstances. He may have done something that has put him in a position which there is great fear. So he's not saying, well, I'm I'm simply guilty and therefore I need to suffer the consequences. David was someone who always, no matter what it was, he turned to God. And this is one of the most precious principles of the scriptures, that God is available to his redeemed. That no matter what we have done, no matter what's going on in our life, it is always wise, it is always appropriate, it is always acceptable to turn to God. So notice what he says in this verse. He says, O Lord, doesn't say God, he says, Lord, this name that is transcendent meaning goes beyond all things without limitations or or boundaries and the good thing news here is that david he turns to this god where all things are possible so he says "O lord not in your anger rebuke me and not in your and it's word for hot and it means his hot anger discipline me So David is not saying, I don't deserve a rebuke. I don't deserve discipline. He knows he does. But he's petitioning God not to do so in anger, not to do it in this this heat of the moment. So David is turning to God, and notice what else he seeks. He makes his petition not just based on some empty hope, But the next word we see here, chaneni, is a word of supplicating. It is a word which means, God, I desire your grace. And more specific, the word chesed is more related to grace. The word chen, in this context, is more related to favor. So he's saying, O Lord, be favorable to me. Extend to me that which is going to produce good things in my life, even though he realizes that he should be receiving God's anger. Nevertheless, he turns faithfully. He turns in a hope that's based upon the grace of God. He says, be gracious unto me, O Lord, for, and notice this next word, it's the Hebrew word, umlal. Now, the reason why I want to say this is because I believe that some Bibles says basically that I am weak. It is not the word for weak. It is a word for being in a most miserable situation or one who is miserable. And David, it's so significant, it's humbling, but David says, for the the miserable am I. Now, it doesn't mean simply that he's in a miserable circumstance. It means that he is miserable. David is saying something that's so important, and that's this, that he has no right, there's no merit that God would show him favor. 
It's not dependent upon who David is or what David has done or hasn't done. It's all rooted in this word chen, and it has to do with who God is. God is a God that shows forth favor and grace to those who do not deserve it. And David says, boy, I really don't deserve it because I am miserable. And here again, not just in a miserable circumstance, but he himself, it's applied to him. And therefore he calls out and heal me, O Lord, for my bones. And this is a word having to do with the very essence of an individual, the very foundations of who he is. So sometimes bones can refer to the very being of that person. And he says here that he wants God to heal him. And also, notice he says, for nifhalu. This is a word for being in the state of panic. This is a, a great fear that seizes someone and has an effect on every aspect of that person. You know, when someone's extremely fearful, they, they may begin to shake. They don't function well. Fear sometimes causes them to make horrible decisions or to say things they ought not say or do not really mean. And this is what David is saying. He's in this situation. The fact that he says, don't be angry, speaks of perhaps guiltiness. This also goes along with him saying, miserable am I. But nevertheless, David, this man, always after God's own heart, he's turning to God in order to find help, to find forgiveness, to find grace, to find God ministering to him that he would not at the very foundations of his life be afraid. We read on in this next verse, verse uh, 4 in Hebrew, 3 in English. He says, Venafshi nifhala, that same word for being fearful, shaken, out of control, startled, however you want to translate it. He says, my soul is nifhalu or nifhala me'od, which means greatly or exceedingly. It's a word, very as in very much. So we've seen several times David confessing that he is extremely, exceedingly afraid. And the fact that he uses the word nafshi implies a spiritual, not just a physical problem, but a spiritual condition that is, is not, not well, not good. He says, and you, O Lord, then he said, Ad Matai. Now, that expression, Ad Matai, literally means until when. But normally, it is implied when it's used in the scripture, seeking a kingdom deliverance. That David is seeking to be delivered from the circumstances of this world, this age, he wants the outcome of redemption, not just being redeemed, but the results of being redeemed, redeemed, and that is the kingdom. So he has a kingdom expectation. And that's so important because it's only when we have that kingdom hope that we're going to experience that kingdom comfort, one that overcomes the, the limitations that we have in this age, in this body, in certain circumstances. So David is saying, until when, and usually that is a cry for Messiah, that Messiah might come and bring about that, that redemptive change known as the kingdom of God. Verse, verse 5, verse 4 in English. Shuva Adonai, which means, O Lord, turn. You were moving in this direction probably because of his guiltiness. But now he wants God to make a change in direction to move differently. He says, turn, O Lord, and my soul. And this is a word for deliver, to, to set free, to assist. But what's important about it is this, 
it is a word that's related to, well, I've shared this before. If you have a, a bottle with a cork in it, and when you remove that cork, it usually makes a sound. Sometimes the liquid inside will just bubble over, and that's because it was full of pressure. And now this is a release, and that's probably the best way that we can understand this word when David says, turn, O Lord, and release my soul. This is such a wise thing for people to pray. God, grant me release of these burdens, of these problems, of these hardships, of these uh, things that I have created by my own disobedience. God still helps those who have disobeyed if they truly want to see a right change into their life. And David says, not only turn, O God, but notice he says, Hoshiani, which means save me. And what's the basis of him crying out for, for this act of saving? Well, he says, Lama'an, on account of Chastecha, your grace. So we see both the words in the opening part of this psalm being used for grace. One is a grace that presents favor upon someone in their situation. And the second one is grace, which involves forgiveness and restoration. And that's what David wants. He wants to be restored. But here's the key. Restored to what? Restored to a covenantal relationship, but also the purposes of God. Realize that biblically, whenever that word grace appears, it's in order that I can be restored back to a place where I can obey God and move once more in his will and accomplish his purpose. If, if grace isn't related to the purpose of God, it's not a biblical grace. And many people are perverting God's grace. Paul warned this exceedingly in his epistles. Now, I praise God and I, I advance the, the purposes of God by means of speaking and teaching on grace. Nothing moves forward. Nothing will advance in the will of God, the purposes of God, without an individual receiving grace. And God's grace is great. God's grace is powerful. But realize, it always is a purposeful grace, and that is to restore us back to the things of God, the will of God. Read on in the next verse, verse 6 in Hebrew, 5 in English. He says, Ki an be mavid zikracha, for there is not in death your memory. People aren't going to remember you, and here's the key. This word for remembering, remember I shared with you that this word, Zain Kaf Resh is a covenantal word. And what he's saying is this, in death, and this means I'm no longer in this world, I've died physically, therefore the covenant purposes, the covenant commandments, the covenant obligations, the dead can't, can't fulfill, can't do. And why this verse is so important is that it helps us to understand something. When it's rightly understood, this verse is telling us how David wants God to do all these things, not to be angry with him, but to extend him grace, to move in his life. For what purpose? So that David does not die in order that these covenantal obligations cannot be met in his life in this world. David still wants to be an influence in this world for covenantal truth. He says, in, keep reading, in Sheol, Bish'ol, mi yode lacha, in Sheol, that place of the dead, who gives you thanks? And most scholars believe that he's speaking about Sheol, not just in the place of the dead, but in the place of those who are being punished. These individuals, they have no hope, 
and they do not give thanks to God now they will acknowledge God the book of Philippians tells us of this they'll know that he is the Lord of Lords the King of Kings but they're not going to be able to publicly give thanks in order to influence others this giving of thanks is part of a testimony it's part of what we are called to be not just do but be to be thankful to be individuals that express gratitude and he says in verse 7 yagati be anchati i am and the word here is worn out i i've come to the end i'm exhausted in my groanings now this tells us something david is speaking about here the term groaning and this word is oftentimes used in regard to praying before god it says for example in the book of romans that the the world groans and sometimes also in the new covenant in paul's writings in first corinthians it speaks about groanings as as the language of the Holy Spirit interceding in our prayer life. So David is saying, I have been praying and praying and praying, and, and I have come to an end. I'm worn out spiritually. And notice how he illustrates this. He says, I have swim. I will swim in every night, every night in my bed. Why does he use the word swim? Because if you keep reading, the next word is in my tears. And he's speaking about the fact that on his bed, each and every night, it's like he's swimming in his tears because of his, his repentant spirit, because of his supplications before God. He uses a different word for bed. He uses the word RC, which is just simply another word for for a a place of rest and he says i will and i think some bibles say i will be drenched but it's a word for melting and when something melts there's liquid so it's another synonym for simply saying that his bed his place of rest is is wet with tears he's been crying and we'll see that again as we move on Look now to verse verse 7 in English, 8 in Hebrew. Ashasha, Ashasha, Mika'as, Ena. And this word means to waste away, he says. My eye is wasting away from anger. Now, what is he angry about? Well, the context is probably at himself that he is so remorseful of of what what he has done the situation that he has placed himself in he has been interceding and there hasn't been a response from god david has reached out he's asked for a change in his circumstances but in this time he's not gotten it so he says my eye is wasting away from anger and then he says he uses the word "aka," which is a word for for being old or time uh, passing through. He says, "and and old in all my my enemies," meaning a lot of time has passed through that David has been in the midst of his enemies what they are placing upon him so david's been suffering he's been in a difficult situation that has caused him to fear to be afraid he's turned to god for quite a while but up until this time there has been no response and david is at his physical and spiritual breaking point read on next verse he says turn from me that is remove from me all workers of iniquity of lawlessness of wickedness the word is aven and aven best means wickedness so even though david may be guilty now there's those individuals who aren't fearful for god they're workers of wickedness and they are harassing 
they are injuring, they are afflicting David. And he says, Ki shema Hashem koli which means the Lord, he has heard, for the Lord has heard the voice of my bechi. Bechi is weeping. Now here, there's a change. David is experiencing a breakthrough. And this breakthrough means that God's going to be active in his life in a way of restoring, placing David back where he's able to once again, and here's the key, to serve God. So he says, for the Lord, he has heard the voice of my weeping. Verse 10 in Hebrew, 9 in English. The Lord has heard my supplication. And this is important because it goes along with the first verse that we see in verse uh, 3 in Hebrew, 2 in English. The Hebrew word order, it's the first word. Likewise here, when he says in verse, verse 10 in the Hebrew text, verse 9 in English, Hear, O Lord, my supplication. Once more, David is reminding us it's God's grace that produces his favor in our life. And David has had a spiritual breakthrough. And notice something. It comes not at the beginning. It comes not in the middle, but at the very end. At David, at his breaking point, God puts forth this change. And that should be an encouragement to you and me not to give up. Not to, to, to stop interceding and praying and bringing our petitions before God. God, He will, in, in, in the future, He will respond. He loves to restore. So, Lord, You have heard my, my supplication. Oh, Lord, my prayer You have taken. And this is important because we see David. And this word for prayer is a word for for bringing things to its completion, making complete whole. Prayer, the Hebrew word for prayer, has to do with that which is holistic, and I mean whole in its entirety. David is going to experience a holistic restoration. God has taken hold of David's prayer. And what's the outcome of that? Well, our final verse, verse 11 in Hebrew, 10 in English. Yevoshu. Now, this means they will be ashamed. Who's going to ultimately be ashamed? Well, David says, let them be ashamed. Let them be exceedingly fearful. That same word that was used to him twice, having to do with shaking his very foundations, the very essence, his bones, this word for being greatly afraid. And it has a, a word, this word me'od, which means exceedingly. So they, they will, will be removed. He says they will be ashamed. They will be exceedingly fearful. Who? All my enemies. Now, this tells us that they are David's enemies because they are hindering, they are against David doing the right thing. They don't want David to live an obedient life. Those are truly who, you, who your enemies are. Those who don't want you to walk in righteousness, to walk being empowered by God's grace, having that change of salvation. This is who David is praying against. And he says, may they be ashamed, may they be exceedingly fearful. All those who don't want God's will in my life. Those are his enemies. He says, look at verse, verse 11 at the end. They will turn. Now, as God moves, he is going to move against them. And their purposes, his enemies, their purposes are not going to be fulfilled. They're not going to be achieved. Why? Why? 
because God is going to turn them away from David. And once again, they're going to be moved. And that same word appears, they will be ashamed. Now, even though David may have, and the context would lead us to this conclusion, may have done something wrong outside of God's will, David is repentant. And these individuals are standing opposed to David's repentance, David turning in obedience back to God. And therefore, because they're doing that, David has confidence that God is going to remove them, that God is going to make them to be ashamed, that he's going to bring that that exceedingly great fear into their life. And in the end, notice the last word. He says the last word, raga. What's raga? Well, it's a word that means uh, basically that God's going to do something in a moment. And it speaks about how God is able to bring a quick change into our circumstances. Now, David might say, wait, I've been praying for days and weeks and months, and there's been no change. But when God says yes to that change, when that prayer reaches the level, the intensity, the duration that God requires, at that time, God will move. And what the scripture tells us is that he's going to move and move quickly. Be encouraged. You may have blown it. You may be in a very difficult situation that you have made for yourself. And that disobedience may have empowered the enemies against you. But don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Turn back to God. Seek His mercy. Seek His grace. Expect His favor. That He will turn and move in your life and in your circumstances that you might be an individual that does what David wants to do. To make mention of this covenantal, faithful God. This God who indeed is praiseworthy, that we want to give him thanks publicly and have the expectation that even if we're close to our breaking point, God, he will never let us go beyond that point and that he will move, he will bring restoration and he'll do it when he begins, he'll bring it about quickly. The process may be long, but when God moves, he moves quickly, and that restoration can come like that. Don't lose heart. Be encouraged. Stand steadfast in your prayers, your supplication, and God will move in a victorious way for you to see you restored back to his covenantal condition that you might be able to have that glorious testimony that gives him praise and honor and that you can obey his purposes for your life. That's what is foundational for a proper prayer life. Well, I'll close with that. Until next week, Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Shalom from Israel.